Are you in your late 20s all the way into your 30s? Have you ever wondered what specific anti-aging product that you should be focusing on? Are you considering using Retin-A or Botox or some more aggressive anti-aging products? Today we're going to be talking about the best anti-aging skincare in your 30s that you should be focusing on. So this is what happens in your 30s uh, to your skin and you might start to see some visible signs of this. So the first one is your skin cell skin cell turnover rate starts to slow down. So you may start to see maybe some uneven skin tone, maybe some dullness. Your skin's volume, you start to lose that plushness and bounceness. The collagen elastin fibers start to kind of loosen and the elastin coils start to also become tight. So therefore you start to see fine lines and wrinkles because your skin can't move as freely with the expressions that you have on your face. So the damage that's been caused by UV rays and pollution may not have started appearing yet. But for those of you who kind of abused your skin in your 20s and even when you were younger by not wearing sunscreen or by not using any skincare products, this may start to show up as early as your mid 20s. So if you're already starting to see fine lines and wrinkles, that means that damage accumulation started much earlier. So it is very important now to start paying attention to the skincare products that you are using on your face. So although more and more young women in their 20s are already starting to come in and get some facial treatments, it's really in your 30s that where you really start to see the sun damage. Unless you have taken care of your skin and you're in your 40s and then you start to see them. And we're actually gonna be doing a video for anti-aging skincare, best skincare tips for you in your 40s and your 50s. Hi, my name is Christy Green and I'm the owner of Go See Christy Beauty Boutique and I have been treating clients with acne, hyperpigmentation, and fine lines for over 10 years. So thank you for coming in and watching our video. So many young women want to know what is the best anti-aging product, but this is the age where you should really be focusing on exfoliating because if your skin cannot absorb these serums and these creams, these moisturizers in your skin, then you're wasting your money. So we wanna focus first on exfoliating your skin because this is the stage where your skin cell turnover rate starts to slow down. So for those of you who are not sure which type of exfoliants that you should be using, I do have a video, I'm gonna put the link above here, which is exfoliation, the three different types and the best types for your skin. Don't forget to watch the video for the pro tip. Okay, so the second condition that you have to address is the collagen and elastin fibers as they start to loosen and tighten. So the first one I'm gonna to talk to you about is for those of you who have fair skin, thinner skin, you may start to see some earlier signs of fine lines and wrinkles versus people who have thicker skin and darker skin. So also if you have fair skin and you've had a lot of sun damage, you're gonna to start to see more age spots and uh, uneven skin tone. So going back to people who have darker skin and olive skin tone, they typically, not always, but they typically have thicker skin. So their first concern is not typically going to be fine lines and wrinkles unless they got a lot of sun when they were earlier. Theirs is going to be hyperpigmentation. They tend to produce more oil so their skin doesn't show a lot of fine lines and wrinkles. And their melanin actually, they get more melanin, it's closer to the skin surface. So they actually get more natural protection at some level from the sun. So for those of you who have fair or sensitive skin, the type of exfoliants that you need to look for or focus on, if your skin can tolerate it, is more the enzymatic based exfoliant. So for example, bromelain, which is an enzyme from papaya, or I did it again, not papaya, bromelain is one and that is from pineapple, papain is from papaya, uh, enzymes from cherries, those are more gentle than your glycolic acid based um, exfoliants. Or if you can, you can even use a lactic acid. That is one of the more gentle acids out of all the family of acids. 
you can also do pumpkin. Another one that's mostly based for people who have um, acne is salicylic acid. Some of you may even use that one. Now what's different about this one is this is a beta hydroxy acid. So again, you have to test it out. Some sensitive types actually tolerate the beta hydroxy acid better than the fruit acids. So the only way to know though is to try it and test it. But for most sensi true sensitive skin types, glycolic acid is not uh, tolerated as well. So the reason why I recommend these fruit acids when you're young is because this not only obviously helps exfoliate the skin, it also boosts your absorption of the natural antioxidants that are in the fruit acids as well as the polyphenols. So before we get into whether you need an expensive anti-aging product or cream, we would love it if you hit the subscribe button if you're not already following us and hit that notification bell to get notified when we have our new videos every week. And as well, please give us a thumbs up. This helps support our chat channel and to let us know that these are the kind of information that you are looking for. Okay, so on to the next part. So look for vitamins uh, A, C, and E in the serums. Now the best type um, is to look for these kind of serums that have high concentrations of these, but again, if you have sensitive skin, you may not be able to tolerate especially vitamin A or C. Um, you're gonna be able to tolerate the vitamin E a lot more. Now, if you can't afford these expensive serums, then look into some oils. The oils naturally have occurring antioxidants. Again, they're, they're not as isolated, but you still can get them. I'll put a link up here for the best facial oils because one of them I highly recommend is the Sea Buckthorn Berry Oil. Um, it not only has the antioxidants, but it has the actually complete omega family of the fatty acids that you need to help supplement the ceramides, the fatty acids and cholesterol that actually hold your um, keratinocyte, keratinocytes together. And the other one that you might wanna consider is the grape seed oil as well. Um, that one doesn't have the complete omega family fatty acids in there but that one still is good for antioxidant benefits now at this stage in the game you don't really need to focus on the hundred dollar anti-aging creams to get the most bang for your buck, you want to focus on the serums. You always want to focus on serums across the board because they are actually the most concentrated, usually in the bioactive ingredients. But uh, if your budget is limited, then always focus on the serums first and not so much on the creams. The creams is going to be in the next generation. Unless, of course, you are using a Retin-A or you, you're using something that is really speeding up your skin cell turnover rate and your skin starts to lose its ability to hold its own moisture in, then you need a good cream. However, not so much the anti-aging cream, focus more on the anti-aging serum, but your cream is to hydrate and keep that moisture in. Here comes the pro tip. Okay, so the pro tip is to increase the hydrating capability of your cream is to get a very good toner because what that is going to do is that's actually going to increase the efficacy, if you get the right toner, um, increase the efficacy of the bioactive ingredients, in this case antioxidants and even hydrating properties in your serum. So I'll put a link in the description below of this toner. I just love this toner of what it has. Um, it one of the main ingredients for humectants it's very high in the ingredients this is of course glycerin sodium pca sodium hyaluronate but it also has this plant derived humectant that really helps the skin be able to hold on to and increase its hydration levels as well as peptides and peptides is the new technology for anti-aging ingredients and what is unique about this toner is it actually makes the skin smooth and supple by increasing its own barrier function. So what are these peptides? So the first one is palmitol oligopeptide and the other one is palmitol tetrapeptide. So what these combination of these peptides do is again, when in your 30s, you start to see the fine lines and wrinkles. And part of it is again, because your skin is not pliable, it's not plush. So what this does is it increases hydration levels of your skin so that your skin can basically metabolize Mm, what's the easy way to say it? So to be able to um, metabolize and make its own fatty acids and cholesterol to be able to seal in that moisture level. 
as far as eye creams and eye gels go, they're typically, in addition to the serums, the most expensive per its size. And that is because serums and eye creams and eye gels typically have the most concentration of bioactive ingredients. So at this point, if you do not have the under eye bags, the saggy eyelids, the dark under eye circle, then you can get a um, one that just simply hydrates your skin. You don't have to get one that's too expensive. Um, but if you want more prevention and you want ones than peptides, then you are gonna have to spend a little more. If you have these specific eye, under eye circles, bags, saggy eyelids, puffy eyelids, then we do, we do have a video. I'll put the link up here um, on those, on the very specific eye creams can treat that. But if you don't have this at this stage, that is not what you want to concentrate on. Okay, so if you typically have oily skin, then stick to the eye gels or the water-based um, eye gels. And if you have drier skin or normal to dry skin, then you can use a cream. Now, for those eye creams that have retin-all or you're using retin-A under the eyes, please be very careful around the eye area. This is called the paraocular area. This can be sensitive. Your skin tends to be thinner. If you're going to use a retin-A or retinol-based cream, I wouldn't really recommend an eye cream just to use an overall face cream for that because it can increase um, irritation and inflammation um, and then when you do that and you do it consistently you can actually see an increase of fine lines and crepiness around the skin. So finally for those of you who are in your late 20s and 30s the one good thing that you need to spend good money on and you wouldn't think so is the sunscreen because right now you are still in that prevention stage where most of you are not seeing the signs of aging unless you're seeing the premature fine lines and wrinkles. So invest in a good sunscreen. So here are some things to look for. Again, this is one that I really like um, because I've evaluated the ingredients in here because it's an all-in-one. It is a sunscreen that has plant-based antioxidants and peptides as well as plant-based lighteners and brighteners to even out your skin tone and hydration and a mineral-based sunscreen. It doesn't have the chemical one which tends to make people's skin itchy, inflamed, um, and some of some people even have rashes on there and I'll put the product link in the description below. If you can find an all in one that is a sunscreen that's a moisturizer and has anti-aging benefits um, prevention benefits lightening benefits that is your best bet at this point in your life stage I would really avoid the drugstore brand sunscreens um, and make sure it's at least a 30 SPF or higher and remember makeup is an art and skincare is a science we'll see you next week